So, um, sure. just from your perspective, to just tell us an elevated pitch about yourself and authentic an African. Sure. So, um, you know, what I usually say on my YouTube videos is I'm an authentic American. Well, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I say on my YouTube videos, yeah. um, I'm a Sierra Leonean American. Well, first of all, my name is Joannis or Joe Hatagwa. Some people call me Joe. I'm a Sierra Leonean American living in Accra, Ghana, back and forth between Sierra Leone and Ghana. Yeah. So I'm building a house in Sierra Leone, have a business there, have my dual citizenship between the U.S. and Sierra Leone, but I've made a career and I live currently in Ghana full time. I love that. Uh, so that's a little bit about me. Um, Authentic African is a platform really meant to bridge the gap between the diaspora and the continent of Africa, specifically West Africa, where I spend most of my time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started by just sharing my story, moving to the uh, West Africa and, and dealing with some of the challenges that Wahala we talked about, right? Uh, but then also the good elements to it too. Um, and really trying to help people understand what it's like to make that move or to visit. Uh, and then ideally longer term, I wanna spend more time, you know, highlighting entrepreneurs, companies and businesses uh, so that people can start investing uh, their dollars. You know, especially black Americans who are looking for another place to invest their dollars. I think um, the continent of Africa is where it's at. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we should be more involved uh, as opposed to the folks who are uh, the majority of the funders of, of companies here on the continent. Oh, absolutely. We should. I mean, um, there are some upsets of people seeing foreigners getting involved, sure. you know, like taking our assets or trying to convince us to, to take our assets or manipulating us to take our assets. So yeah. definitely, definitely, we should get more involved. And I think I have... I think I read or I heard an article the other day where I think they sat some foreign employees from a particular project because they want more Africans and more Ghanaians to be involved. Right. So it's an interesting time that we're in. I think a lot of Africans are waking up to seeing the potential and they're spending the coffee. Agreed, 100%. <laughs> and, 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 it's bring, and Ghana's done a great job of bringing diasporans back too. Mm -hmm. I came for the year of return in 2019. I'd only been to Sierra Leone and I came to Ghana, fell in love, and a year later I moved. Beautiful. I can't yeah. believe it. So the year return, was that the driver for you to move to Ghana? Yeah. So I, you know, I was with my friends in Sierra Leone the previous year and shout out to Ivy Prosper because she had been working hard on the beyond the return and the year of return social media. Mm -hmm. And so there was a bunch of videos that had gone viral of non Ghanaians in Ghana. And I was like, what is going on in Ghana in December that everybody's going to Ghana? So uh, a group of friends of mine and I, we decided in 2018 that in 2019, we'd come to Ghana. We didn't even know what the year of return was. Mm -hmm. We just saw the viral videos. And so when I came, um, I wasn't just here for, you know, Afrochella, Afro Nation. I actually went and met with a company I had been advising. Um, and they were working with Multimedia Group, which is one of the big uh, media houses here in Ghana. And so I got a chance to go to their production room, joy.fm. I got to see them recording a radio show, their news. Yeah. And I was really impressed by everything that they were doing. Wow. And it would, to me, it was like, this is the future that I can see Sierra Leone being. Um, and so, you know, after about a year, you know, some soul searching and some <laughs> deep thought and a lot of conversations with uh, mentors on the continent, people that I know that are here. Uh, I made the decision in July of 2020 to move full time. But it, if, if it wasn't for that trip in 2019, I would never have considered making the move. Wow. So that trip basically kind of like gave you different perspectives of Ghana and it just kind of made you think, ah, oh, let me come and kind of live there. Yeah. Well, but, but, but before you came here, you've been you've spending time in Sierra Leone as well, hasn't you? Only Sierra Leone. I hadn't actually even been to Ghana as of yet. And so, you know, Sierra Leone is a much smaller country on the west coast of Africa. Um, and, you know, for us, you know, we, we always talk about the potential where we can be one day. And I know Ghanaians say the same thing about Ghana. Yeah. Um, but what was exciting for me was to see how far Ghana had progressed after hearing um, some of the developmental challenges that you might have seen 20 or 30 years ago, which I do see today in Sierra Leone. And so for me, it was really exciting to, like I said, to see kind of where we're going as, as, as a continent, specifically in West Africa. Um, and I knew that if I came to Ghana, you know, I would be able to learn a lot from this experience and do what I can to take what I'm learning and apply it back home in Sierra Leone. Um, and I fell in love with Ghana. You know, that, that one week I was here was enough to say, I'm going to move to Ghana. And I did. And I, I'm happy I made the decision. It's the best decision I've ever made. Wow. That's, yeah. that's, that's incredible. I've never really heard that many people saying that. Yeah. Just after what I've went through just before. <laughs> just <for the> interview. <laughs> it will test your patience. It will. Oh, it will. oh my gosh. It definitely will test your patience. 
And do you think, do you, have you, have you, do you, um, maybe I might say this the wrong way. Sure. Do you feel like you've been, do you feel like Ghana has been a little bit of a sandbox for you today to maybe try out and test things out in Sierra Leone? Because that's also in West Africa. I don't know if you, I don't know if that makes sense. So maybe yeah. Projects or entrepreneurial endeavors or maybe jobs that you've had here. Maybe you, maybe you're thinking, hmm, maybe I can try and get this right in Sierra Leone. Maybe I could also consider Sierra Leone. I mean, I know Sierra Leone is a sec- second or third home to you yeah or maybe you might want to be a bit more based out there than here but you want to use Ghana as this kind of sandbox has that ever kind of occurred to you yeah i mean it, it definitely it, it first it was really just where is the easiest transition for me like if i'm moving to west africa i have because I'm an English speaker, I don't speak French. So it was, to me, it I was Lagos. Speak French as well. Yeah, there's, you know, there's the Francophone West Africa, there's the Anglophone West Africa. And yeah. when we're dealing with Anglophone West Africa, it's really Lagos, Abuja, maybe, if, if you want to do those two cities in, yeah. in Nigeria. Then you have Accra, right? And then for me, I also had Freetown because I'm Sierra Leonean. Um, and so what, what I, those are the options I had for myself. Uh, Lagos is a, is a bit... Um, stressful we'll yeah. say you know it could be a stressful <laughs> it's a stressful city 30 million almost 30 million people um so very very um highly densely populated city mm-hmm. um and so and so i'd been there but coming to accra it just it kind of was a mix of the, the two things that i really wanted where it was it was close enough in proximity mm-hmm. um obviously english speaking culturally a bit different but uh at the very least it was in the same general um, area in West Africa. And so there were some similarities, there were some similarities in food. Um, some of the infrastructural challenges are challenges um, that we all see, and Ghana has solved some of them. And so just learning from what Ghana has, has done to kind of progress in those areas, I knew that I could take some of that and apply it um, back in Sierra Leone. So there was a little bit of what's the easiest transition? And for <laughs> me right now, it's Accra. Yeah. And then also, what can I learn from there and, and bring it back bring home? It back. So that's more of the thing. What can you learn from Ghana? You can go and apply yeah. in Syria rather than Ghana being some kind of sandbox. Yeah. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. All right. So I know you've been um, you know, in the digital advertising space for quite some time. Yes. You've worked for e-commerce brands as well. Yep. Maybe, maybe spin up startups. I think it makes sense to talk about the digital African gold rush. So Absolutely. right now we've seen a lot of businesses, a lot of types of startups come up in the scene. I think just before the interview started, we talked, talked about FinTech. Yep. Of course, it was sponsored by Zuberi this right. season. All right, guys, thanks for watching that clip from the Authentic African YouTube channel. If you want to see the full video, click up here. If you want to subscribe, don't forget to subscribe by clicking this link right here. And if you want to see anything more from the channel, then you want to click down here. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See you all in the next video.